Good morning. Hope you enjoy the keynote with Chris and Bill and are ready for TechCon 2023. I'm Enrique Gallegos and I'll be your host um, for the day in the application integration track. We we're covering a lot of ground today. So if you have any questions, please submit in the q and in, in your chat window. Make sure you respond to Paul Chris's question, provide us feedback and make comments. We now, uh, we, we know you want to hear what the experts have to say. So I'm turning it over now with our first speaker, Nate Seaman, Program Director for App Integration. Thank you, Nate. All right, thanks, Enrique. Um, I'd like to also welcome all of you to TechCon and this, this first session in our App Integration track. I'm joined by my colleagues, Annalise and Bernard, and we'll be covering our point of view on trends that we're seeing in the market, recently delivered features around those trends, and a demo of our latest offering uh, our, and integration platform as a service. Now, while this isn't under NDA, I do hope that you'll get a glimpse into the direction that our products are going and how our investments are supporting you, our customers, in this ever-changing market. So uh, looking at the, the uh, session sessions this year, um, we've got a great lineup uh, with just a little something for everybody. Now, whether you've been with us for years or whether you're evaluating our product as part of your integration strategy today, we've got even more technical experts from the lab compared to last year with new sessions like performance and troubleshooting, which is always a popular topic, Prolifics will be sharing a use case driven session on integration modernization, and you can catch refreshed technical content on a number of different topics like DevOps and agile integration, operating ACE version 12 on Kubernetes and version migration. So uh, let's go ahead and jump right on in to some of the market trends. And here, I'm really wanting to talk about three different trends. There are, of, of course, many, but I've chosen the three. I just love the rule of three, so we're going to go with that today. Um, you'll probably see that in a number of the slides that, that we go through. Um, but speaking with businesses throughout the year, we consistently see several market trends that we're showing here that are driving strong need for integration and confirm trends that analysts are sharing as well. So while each industry is, of course, a little different, they're moving at different rates and paces. Broadly speaking, we're continuing to see strong growth of digital transformation projects. We'll call that digital boom for today. Um, even with the recent market uncertainties that, that we're seeing, we're continuing to see um, strong interest and in progression of those uh, digital transformation projects with our customers. Now, the demands for new digital experiences for end consumers um, is really moving from a disruptor to more of a table stake as, as, uh, as more companies are building digital experiences. Um, and it, it's becoming even more critical to remove manual steps from backend processes as teams adjust to new ways of working, uh, with many times smaller teams and greater expectations. Uh, this all requires secure access to the right data at the right time in the right format. And that's where app integration continues to play a critical function today. Now, uh, we're also seeing a rapid shift in adoption of more digital applications across teams. Majority of organizations have over 100 applications across on-premise and cloud. And we've spoken to many teams like HR that are using more than 25 alone. So no matter what process you're, you're looking to improve or to modernize, chances are there's an app for it. And line of businesses are more often than not choosing these applications and embracing simple to subscribe to and use software as a service. Now, at the same time, IT is modernizing and removing manual processes uh, and often replacing homegrown with vendor managed apps and public cloud services. Now IDC here uh, projects that 54% of apps will be modernized to cloud in the next three years. Personally, I see that as a lofty goal, uh, especially with large enterprises. 
uh, I think we can agree that it is happening on some time horizon in the future. Uh, this is all resulting in hundreds of application applications, uh, resulting in data silos and growing complexity that's demonstrating the need to deliver integrations faster and easier in the future. Now, last but not least, are trends in what I'll call workforce expansion. Um, as digital transformation accelerates, resulting in more applications used by more lines of businesses, uh, IT resources are limited in what is achievable, no matter how efficient they, can, they become. Uh, this really results in expansion of workforce that's involved with integration today, with line of business teams hiring business technologists um, who are seeking lower code tools uh, to be self-sufficient and move faster in integrating their day-to-day -day tasks. So new tools from integration, uh, integration providers are facilitating lower entry points for app integration, uh, and the use of AI is reducing technical skills that are required in tasks like data mapping. So ultimately, this decentralization is, is helping to achieve both speed and scale that today's businesses are expecting. But it's not all roses and sunshine. Um, IT, our integration experts and architects play such an important role with years of, of integration experience and great technical expertise. And, and I truly believe that truly enabling speed and scale in the enterprise um, is even more critical for, for IT to stay involved and to provide consumable integrations and provide heavier weight integration where needed um, and do so in a way that IT can govern and control the access to that data, especially editing data and especially your traditional systems of record uh, while enabling uh, these uh, greater workforce of integrators with more self-service. So let's go ahead and double click a little bit into each of these. All right. Um, first, looking at digital transformation, um, so often uh, APIs are involved really as a key enabler to, uh, to where integration flows become the API implementation. And while this certainly isn't something that's new, uh, it really is a standard uh, in, in integration style that enables more flexible and agile architecture. Now, once APIs are created, they must be managed and secured, uh, shared with governance and control. Uh, you'll see market trends across integration vendors, uh, including us here at IBM, making, uh, making that easier to accomplish uh, through bringing together app integration and API management to facilitate uh, what we'll call API-led integration. Uh, now, APIs are, are continuing to um, you know, lead the way in terms of not only ways of integrating, um, uh, but also in terms of how cloud native applications are built. Uh, and ultimately, um, APIs are becoming uh, not only very popular, but as they're becoming popular, uh, becoming one of the, the most uh, common threat vectors for threat actors today. So as looking to expose your APIs uh, for uh, building composite integrations with multiple, uh, multiple integration flows exposed as APIs, uh, you also need to look at security, right? And that's where API management, API gateways, uh, and other technologies there continue to facilitate uh, the security of your APIs and API-led integration, which really brings together this story uh, around how critical it is to have both app integration and API management together. Okay, uh, let's double click a little bit into uh, workforce expansion of integrators. Uh, we continue to see strong need for technology integrators requiring develop, uh, developer-oriented IDE with graphical tools, um, ability to get into, you know, both uh, uh, protocols uh, and, and transports in terms of, of working with uh, uh, applications and systems. Um, and we also see 
app and API developers getting in the game of exposing flows as APIs within integration tools that you see here in the middle. Um, and on the left, uh, the business technologists needing low code simplicity built for SaaS applications um, and consumable integrations that are written by IT uh, for accessing data in your on-premise and cloud systems securely and in a controlled fashion. Now, Gartner forecasts by 2026 that developers outside of central IT will account for at least 80% of the user base for low-code dev tools, which is up from 60% just a few years ago. And while this supports the trend and the need for low-code and high-productivity tools, we don't really believe that it's an all-or-nothing or a one-or-the-other story here. Um, similar tools are great starting points even for technology integrators um, on your team that uh, uh, need to be productive on day one um, and uh, allow them to be productive members of the team while they deepen their skills over time and transition into uh, the more powerful IDE integration uh, expert, <laughs> expert uh, uh, tooling uh, that they'll need over time. Uh, so let's go ahead and look at some, some integration capabilities. Um, again, before we jump into what's new, I just want to spend a few minutes here uh, setting the foundation for how you consume app integration capabilities with IBM um, for all of those that are out there that are not resident experts in our offering already. Uh, so uh, kind of jumping on in, uh, we do deliver all of our app integration capabilities through our product, uh, App Connect Enterprise. This includes the ability to build and test integration flows, connect with hundreds of apps using pre-built connectors, templates, or working directly with data formats and protocols um, in more traditional IDE tools. Uh, the ability to uh, then transform and integrate data across applications. And of course, what is built must be deployed and managed across on-premise and cloud environments. double clicking just a little bit into each of these different aspects. We provide complementary authoring uh, experiences that again, support workforce expansion and integration across the different personas that we just, uh, we just reviewed. Uh, and for building and testing integration flows, we provide these two authoring experiences that again, complement uh, workforce expansion across IT and lines of businesses. So on the right, the toolkit, is an Eclipse-based IDE. Um, it's built for more technical integration experts um, who understand data formats and interfaces to different systems and really need to build more complex integration flows uh, beyond what would be provided in, in more of a, a low-code tool. Uh, on the left, our designer experience is, is built for SaaS applications and low-code integration with the ability to start quickly with pre-built templates, uh, connectors, and use of AI that simplifies uh, uh, field mapping and transforming data between applications in a more intuitive way. They're really built to work together uh, to enable collaboration. And one way is through connectors. And you'll see that kind of come to life as we continue to unfold our what's new story uh, on what we're bringing in terms of different connectors into both experiences. Um, and now integration experts can also create connectors on your own for on-premise or, or cloud-based apps that, that your teams have built, um, that you can then make those consumable in a controlled fashion within the designer catalog. Now, we continue to make strong investments in both of these tools and provide new features and greater value uh, designed to work that the way you do. Um, so whether you're new to App Connect or a, a resident expert here, um, I'd encourage you to check out the deep dive on Wednesday um, that is titled Getting the Most Out of Your Version 12 Toolkit and Designer. All right. Um, you know, beyond uh, building and, um, and use of, of connect and transform of your data, um, we, of course, uh, provide a management experience that allows for easy deploy and management with a dashboard, provides a single unified pane 
uh, for uh, viewing integration across hybrid environments and provides kind of that deeper visibility uh, into flow health that you need. These days, no solution is complete without a strong DevOps story to allow users to follow more agile development practices. And in version 12, we've provided uh, new IBM in commands uh, to really help uh, build source to server pipelines. We provide both CLIs and APIs that work with DevOps tools of your choice. Um, so whether you're using uh, something more traditional uh, like Jenkins or using Tekton pipelines on, on Kubernetes, uh, you can choose the DevOps tools of your choice. Um, if DevOps for integration is your thing, be sure to check out Ben Thompson. He's one of our senior technical staff members. He's got a DevOps session coming up on Thursday. Okay. And finally, um, we provide App Connect with uh, choice and flexibility. And you can consider that in a, a variety of different ways. Uh, you can consume App Connect uh, in a unified integration platform alongside other integration capabilities like messaging and events and API management or you can choose to deploy our software just about anywhere uh, from physical infrastructure choices like X and P and Z uh, in virtual machines, on cloud infrastructure. Um, you can deploy in, in modern Kubernetes platforms. Running our certified containers is available with App Connect Enterprise software. Uh, so if you have uh, entitlement to the software, you can deploy on uh, Kubernetes platforms like cloud Kubernetes services of course, we support OpenShift and, and our containers are, are uh, certified there and, and optimized to take advantage of things like uh, OpenShift's uh, um, OLM or, or lifecycle management capabilities there to make it easier to, to upgrade, um, but is not a requirement. Um, you can also choose um, you know, flexibility and choice between traditional ESB architecture or a more agile microservices architecture with containers. Uh, version 12 supports both of those patterns, and we you know, expect long-term to continue to invest in and in support both of those patterns for our customers today. Um, if you don't want to deploy and you just want to consume um, you, without managing the software, um, we also have SaaS. So we have App Connect uh, Enterprise as a Service, which is our new iPaaS offering, which supports both designer and toolkit-created flows and you'll get a chance to see that in action later this session. So ultimately, we can support you where you are today in deployment and skills and where you aspire to be in the future. Bernard, would you like to take us through kind of expanding beyond deployment into some of the day, to, day, uh, day two needs? Thanks, Nate. Um, yeah, so wherever you have deployed your software, uh, you can now see and understand more about your system than, than ever before. Um, using our integration within Stana, you can do end-to-end -end tracing of your flows or monitor your runtime engines. Um, with our App Connect business transaction monitor, you can track your business transactions across flows. Um, so if we start on the left, uh, we go in end-to-end -end tracing. Um, Instana has sensors there which actually understand our components. So there are sensors for App Connect, as well as our other integration components like Kafka, API Connect, and MQ. Um, and that means it's got data from directly from those components. So Instana can give you an end-to-end -end view of the flows from the initial end user application interaction all the way through the integration components to the back end. The sensors mean you can drill down into the message flows and see the individual flow nodes and how they're behaving, as well as things like queues and queue depth. And it's tracking that over time. So you can see how they're, they're tracking over time as well. In the middle, with the monitoring of product runtimes, you can see the health of all your instances wherever they're deployed. And more than that, Instana will track changes to those instances as well and automatically correlate them with incidents, making it easy to trace back and see what or, or who actually caused a problem and, and trace it back to the original cause. With App Connect Business Transaction Monitoring on the right there, you can set your own events in the flows. And this is really about allowing you to trace a higher level business transaction. So perhaps tracking an order or delivery, where there are multiple flow interactions, you want to be able to check what the status is of a particular delivery. 
So you could create events like item ordered, item in progress, item in transit, item delivered, as well as failure events like item out of stock. And they would all be correlated using a transaction ID, and then you can check that out in the business wanted to see how the business is behaving and where all the transactions are at. So um, basically, you can see, observe as much as you possibly could across all the deployments wherever you're deployed. Um, try it out now. You get six months free in Stana with Cloudpack for integration. Um, if you want to see more, particularly on Instana, check out the observability track. There's a lot of uh, info in there. Okay, back to you, Nate. Okay. All right. So let's go ahead and switch gears and we'll dive into some of the aspects of what's new with App Connect. All right. So, um, App Connect Enterprise, or ACE, as we, we, we loved our acronyms here in, in IBM, uh, version 12 continues to be our, our latest and strategic integration offering, where we continue to make strong investments in, in new enhancements and features that our customers request uh, and uh, align to market trends to ensure that our offerings meet your future needs. So uh, certainly that this includes our toolkit and our traditional ESB architecture, as well as more uh, modern container deployments and our designer experience. Uh, this is of course not a complete list that I'm showing you here. Uh, there'll be many more features that we cover uh, in the various sessions throughout the week. So I'd encourage you to, to take in as many of those sessions as you can. They're all being recorded. So if you happen to miss one, you can go back, um, recommend them to your peers, et cetera, based on you know, what uh, skills and, and areas of, uh, of expertise you're, you're looking at uh, learning this week. Um, I've chosen a subset here that aligns to some of the market trends that we've discussed uh, and together enable both existing customers and new users to be more productive uh, and deploy integrations close to wherever their data happens to reside. Uh, so first, uh, we'll talk a little bit about API-led integration and a new unified authoring experience. Uh, we'll share enhancements that we've made in consuming and developing connectors, expanding our, our uh, connection uh, connector library. Um, that Those all together really help you leverage your data more effectively. Um, we'll then um, look at how we've been busy applying AI uh, pragmatically in ways that are focused on providing day-to-day -day value for integrators. Um, Annalise will be sharing more of the details there. And uh, last, uh, we'll be uh, talking about um, how more of our customers are wanting to consume integration solutions on cloud. Um, now that's encompassing of simply consuming uh, SaaS, but not just that. Uh, you know, we see many patterns where uh, customers want to maintain full control of their deployments and the configurations, uh, but also move to more of an agile uh, integration architecture uh, deployed on Kubernetes platforms, uh, either on public clouds or still on premise. Uh, so we now optimize integration runtimes and containers just for such deployments. Uh, we'll go into that in a little bit more detail later. So um, with that kind of as the intro, we'll go ahead and we'll, uh, we'll dive into each of these a little bit further. All right, uh, Bernard, do you wanna take us through the first set of topics here? Sure. Um, so API-led integration. So why does API-led integration matter? Why is it important? Well, it's all about unlocking data from systems and composing data into processes and, and delivering experiences. That's really what API-led integration is all about. But what people are really doing with an API is creating reusable building blocks. Um, and those building blocks need to be easy to consume. They make it easy to manage for security and scalability and performance. And it makes them easy to, to discover and make them available to others. So they're discoverable effectively through self-service. Um, and really one of the key points about what we're doing here is around agility and reuse, right? So if you implement your first use case, your first project with API-led integration, you might not see the benefit, right? It, it, because you're, it, it's going to be the same as deploying another project through a traditional means. But when you come to do the second one, 
when you come to reuse those building API building blocks that you created as a result of the first project, then you really start to see the benefit. That's when you're starting to see, oh yeah, I can reuse those components and it just speeds everything up. Once those API assets exist, it, exist, it can accelerate and enable line of business innovation. They can develop independently. And ultimately that's gonna make your business more nimble. So say you were looking to host an API, either internally inside the business or, or externally out to your customers, then there's a number of things you'll need to do. So you'll need to define the integration onto the backend system. You could use App Connect to do that, connecting to the backend systems record, bringing together the data that you need to answer the query, perhaps from multiple sources using connectors onto those APIs. Then you need to make it available, publish it to a portal to socialize it, Add credentials around it for the different sets of users and user groups. Add rate limiting to prevent a noisy neighbor from impacting others and ultimately make it go live. You'll need to protect that original API to prevent people going through the back door and accessing the back end service or API without the protections in place. You want to deploy that integration flow as a bar file, those are familiar with App Connect, bind it securely to the API management capability, which will do that portal hosting and maintain the credentials and do the throttling. Now, You'd be thinking doing all that would be hard, and it was hard. But now you can do all of that in one IDE. Define your API, an open API, version three, uh, author your integration flow, set your policies, and publish just by clicking the green button. Build, test, debug really fast. Um, if you're interested in this, Andy and Rashmi are going to be doing a deeper dive into this in the very next session on this track. And Andy will be demoing it for real and showing you the actual UIs. So if this is something that interests you, uh, check out that session. Okay, back to you, Nate. Okay. Oh, looks like we both clicked the forward button at the same time. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay, so um, we've been busy creating new connectors for an ever-changing landscape of popular SaaS applications that across industries, along with uh, cloud services and being able to, to interact with those cloud services such as native AWS services like RDS, S3, and others. Uh, together, uh, connectors and templates play a key role in integrating applications and building APIs and acting on events. So, Built into Designer, available in containers and on our iPads, uh, we've got over 100 new connectors plus more templates. Uh, we've created a community and an experience called Automation Explorer, uh, which is our new home for community connectors and templates to be able to discover more connectors and to learn and explore uh, and uh, being able to develop and customize your own connectors for App Connect with our connector development kit, which is free to use and available through the same uh, online user experience. Now, looking at our uh, connector development kit or CDK for short, um, it is also a, a low code development experience uh, that makes it easy to build connectors from an open API document or doing so from scratch. It's of course much easier with an open API document. Uh, this enables use cases where it, you may have on-premise or cloud native apps that are homegrown uh, that you want to uh, make easier to use uh, either within the designer experience uh, or within, uh, within toolkit. You can customize uh, a community connector for your unique requirements. Uh, or you can create and contribute a brand new connector for a new SaaS application where a connector may not exist. Uh, Rom, our, our uh, senior technical staff member, uh, focused on, on this area of our, our product, uh, along with Swami from our engineering team, are doing a deep dive session on this on Thursday, where you can see the CDK in action uh, and easily get, uh, get hands-on with building your first connector. All right. Now, we're not just delivering connectors for designer. Uh, we've got you covered for toolkit users, too. Uh, the long-term direction that we have is to enable connectors across both of our tools 
focused on those uh, individual connectors that make the most sense and are most requested uh, for each persona and role. Um, so you're going to see more SaaS connectors coming into Toolkit. We've already been delivering that. We have uh, more well on the way. Um, and those are delivered with no dependency on the uh, designer tooling. Uh, they run where your integration, uh, your integration server will run, whether that's a, a traditional ESB deployment uh, or a containerized deployment. Um, and we're also adding tutorials as we go. Uh, or making it easier to learn about different node types, uh, new and different connectors, um, and more with over 100 new tutorials that we've got added uh, and available within Toolkit. Um, check out the hands-on session on uh, smart connectors uh, in Toolkit that's going on this week here as well on Wednesday. Uh, so before I uh, move on to the next topic, as a side note, we're actually also doing the reverse. Um, so we're adding more toolkit capability into the designer experience, uh, such as adding more on-prem database connectors. Again, supporting that same long-term uh, direction that I spoke of. All right, so let's go ahead and switch over and talk about a little bit about how we're applying AI. Over to you, Annalise. Great, thanks, Nate. We're going to stay on the, <clears throat> on the slides for the moment, Enrique. Perfect. Thank you. So the first slide um, is around our simplification with AI. So um, AI is an area within IBM that we are always continuously investing in to help our achievers or help our users achieve better outcomes. Um, Within this space in particular with app integration, there's four areas that we look at um, primarily. The first is API test generation. Uh, this allows for the creation of hundreds of automated test cases, which are really important for um, our developer productivity and allowing them to generate insights um, and coverage of existing test cases by following the API implementation path. This is already available within our cloud pack for integration, but it is also going to be available in SaaS um, shortly as well. Uh, the other three main areas that we like to invest in are all conveniently named um, some variation of assist, which makes it helpful to remember. Um, but the first of which is flow assist, which is very important for our citizen integrators. Um, and basically what that does is provide suggestions. So if you're a new integrator and looking to get started um, or you're getting stuck while creating a flow, it provides recommendations uh, of which um, nodes or additional capabilities to objects, actions, et cetera, to be able to add on um, to keep the user moving. The next piece is our uh, mapping assist. So this leverages semantic understanding and social learning uh, to be able to map uh, different fields from sources to targets. You'll see this within the demo as well. And this is a very important capability um, from my perspective, because it makes it very helpful for when you've got this massive list of fields that you need to um, complete as part of connecting a different application, it really helps streamline that by providing um, suggested inputs and allowing you to quickly just apply those as well. The last piece is around data assist, which helps transform data very quickly, um, which is really important, especially if you're looking at users that um, are leaning more heavily on that no code user experience um, because it helps provide those types of formulas with sample data and quickly generating the transformation um, for them, which you'll also see within the demo as well. If this topic is particularly interesting to you, um, I will also give a shout out to a session that we have on AI um, on Wednesday led by our SDSM ROM as well. I think the benefits of AI often uh, speak for themselves, but it does really get down to that fundamental goal of um, being able to boost productivity for our users. Um, you'll see with the, the different assist capabilities and the auto generation of test cases that you're able to improve um, and accelerate the time with which a developer is able to create these integrations, which is really fundamental. Um, a number of these capabilities are really important for users that are new to integration that might not be as familiar with how or where to map different fields, how to transform different formats of data. So that's where it really takes away some of that learning curve element as well, um, which is particularly important too when you're thinking about all of the upscaling or training you might need to consider across a number of applications for your users. Um, it's also important for being able to um, boost confidence in decisions. So making sure that you 
um, have that reliability and trust. And that's where showing confidence levels um, transparently within the AI itself is also something that we really invest in so that you're able to make educated decisions um, more easily. And overall, this just ties back into the ultimate goal of being able to help you get um, you know, competitive differentiation out into the market as fast as possible. Back to you, Nate. Okay, uh, let's touch on consuming integration solutions on cloud. We're gonna start with uh, self-deployment. Um, so uh, we continue to uh, enhance our integration runtime and our container-based deployments to, to really help you optimize startup and effectively manage your Kubernetes infrastructure. Uh, something that becomes very important when moving from an ESV architecture into an agile integration architecture uh, that have more integration runtimes uh, that are running fewer flows. Uh, so um, you can run commands to optimize the server's uh, startup components that switches off capabilities that are not re required by flows uh, and gain efficiency uh, by running like flows together. Um, of course, mileage will vary based on uh, the makeup of your flows, but for simple flows, we've seen sub-second startup time in containers and reduced CPU and memory footprint. Uh, so for example, when Java nodes are not present, the JVM is not started, uh, which is known to re require considerable resources at startup. Uh, so uh, whether you're deploying in, in uh, uh, a full uh, Kubernetes environments or deploying individual integration servers, uh, into a container um, on Kubernetes or Docker. Uh, we have the ability to uh, provide commands that will, again, help you optimize your server runtime instances that are deployed in containers. Uh, beneficial for whether you're staying uh, on-premise on and, and having uh, more of an uh, uh, on-premise cloud-like environment or private cloud, uh, or using a Kubernetes service on, on public cloud infrastructure. Uh, as well, we also have uh, our new offering AppConnect Enterprise as a service for those who want to consume um, without managing the infrastructure uh, or uh, deploy this for a line of business use uh, separately from what you do with central IT, for example. Um, Annalise, maybe we'll probably want to just uh, jump kind of right into the details and get into the demo based on uh, how we're moving through the uh, session time here. Perfect. Well, happy to run with it. So um, jumping on into our next slide. So we're going to be shifting, like Nate mentioned, into the demo portion of this. So just to set the stage, we're going to be taking you into our iPaaS offering App Connect SaaS, which recently launched in December. And you will see us taking advantage of our no-code tooling and a couple of our AI uh, capabilities to be able to uh, integrate a couple basic um, applications to help solve a problem. So. To set the stage on what that story will look like, I have just two more quick slides um, and then we'll switch over. So I want to introduce everyone to Acme Coffee Roasters. Um, they are a coffee company with a few in-person locations, um, but primarily a thriving online business um, where they distribute nationwide um, their coffee beans. So uh, traditionally they've had a very successful business um, delivering across the country but they decided to run a bunch of sales recently. They, they wanted to um, increase their engagement and they had a lot of success, two times increase in sales. But unfortunately, uh, this does mean that they were a little short staffed when it actually came to the distribution. So traditionally they've been working with a partner called uh, Gifts Inc who has managed all of their distribution nationwide, but Gifts Inc notified uh, Acme Coffee Roasters and said, hey, this is a little too much volume for us to be able to handle. Uh, we'll take care of your East Coast deliveries, but we won't be able to support your West Coast deliveries. So uh, myself, Annalise, as the sales and supply business technologist was like, oh no, we've got to figure out a way to satisfy um, all of these uh, coffee orders. And so I went out and sourced an additional business partner um, called Just In Times Gifts, Inc., who's going to help manage our coffee delivery to the West Coast. Um, however, 
The big caveat though, is this new business partner uses a new order management system. So um, while we've already had an existing setup with our business partner, Gifts Inc., we're gonna have to figure out another way to be able to send these orders over to Just-In-Time Gifts um, that's going to be as seamless and streamlined as well. Um, I reached out to my integration lead, Martin, and was like, hey, can you help set me up? Um, can you add this, uh, this new business partner into our system? But unfortunately, Martin has a million product projects going on right now. And so he was like, hey, you know, we've got this great tool, App Connect Designer. I think that you'll be able to do this on your own. Um, I've set up a template and everything for you already. Why don't you go ahead and give it a shot yourself? So that's where we'll be picking up really quickly just to set the stage a little bit further. You'll see um, Acme Coffee Roasters has been using Oracle um, eBusiness Suites with Gift Inc. to deliver, but now we're gonna add in just-in-time gifts on the right-hand side. Um, and that's where I'm gonna step in and add in the Salesforce connector for them um, so that we're able to meet this demand for the holiday season. All right, switching over to the demo screen, perfect. Let me go ahead and click play. So right now what you're looking at is App Connect Designer. Um, this is the home screen. So I've just logged into my App Connect Designer instance and uh, it's been a while since I've been in here. I logged in a couple of years back, but it's time to get resituated. So I'm just gonna spend a quick minute or two getting oriented within the product before um, I, I dive into editing this flow. So the first thing I'm seeing is the Acme Coffee Roasters um, flow that Martin had set up for me. Perfect. I'm checking out the options I have available at the bottom, event-driven flows, creating an API flow, import a flow, or I can access toolkit. At the top, I also see this help option um, and my, my management console is all available through there. Okay, perfect. So um, all of the things that I expect to see within the product, I'm feeling pretty good so far. Get oriented on the left, I have the home, the dashboard. This is where I can see all of my flows really easily. The catalog where I can check out my out of the box connectors. Oh, and perfect, I see Salesforce has already been connected for me. Great. Um, just quickly checking out a couple other options for the future. I see templates. This is great in case I wanna go ahead and build some, own, some more flows on my own, um, get me started. And then logs and private network connections are within here as well, but I don't think that I need those just yet. So let me go ahead and click on my flow and dive in. All right, I'll give it a second to load. And here I can see Microsoft Dynamics, which is the uh, order management system that we use here at Acme Coffee Roasters. And you can see that it's already been set up to flow through Oracle eBusiness Suites for um, Gifts Inc., our, our first business partner to New York. But I want to add in just in time. So I'm gonna go ahead and click that uh, else if node and um, I'm not certain how to fill in these details, but I can see the details from above um, for our other partners. So I think I'm just going to go ahead and imitate the information that they put within there. Ship to stay. I see it pop up. I can fill it in really quickly. Equals. And then I'll go ahead and set it to California for our West Coast order management system. Perfect. And this is the end of the flow. So I'll make sure I click the exit um, and provide a closeout message. Just copy the same uh, sort of message we have for New York. Right now I need to actually connect a system for this. So I want Salesforce. So I'm going to go ahead and click that plus node. And um, hopefully I will see a, a list of my connectors pop up that I can select from. Oh, and perfect. And Salesforce already connected right at the top. So that's really easy for me to be able to find um, and select to be able to, to bring into this flow. But I know I'm going to need to select a um, specific action that I want to bring in. So after I go ahead and click on Salesforce, I'm going to scroll down to orders and I'm going to go ahead and click create order because we want to send them a create order notice. So I see that get pulled in um, right there. Looking good. Looking like I'm able to do what happened with the Oracle business suite piece pretty easily myself, uh, even though, you know, my integration specialist had done that for me previously. So here now I'm seeing all the fields pop up. I'm not certain how to fill all of these out. And I also feel like I'm missing some of the fields I want. So I'm going to switch to advanced mode so that I can see all of the options and then select generate mapping suggestions. So this is where the mapping assist function is going to come in and help me map all of these fields really quickly. I can edit them, but I think they all look pretty good. So I'm going to go ahead and just hit apply. 
Now, the final thing I do need to remember, though, is just in time gifts ask that I append a gift packages label to every new order that I create. So um, I want to make sure that that gets added to the name of all of these orders. Uh, I'm not exactly sure how to do this, but I think that the data assist function is going to come into play here. So I'm going to go down and click on that order name field, and I see a transform data format option. Perfect. Let's take some sample data to see if we can map it. Okay, that looks right. So I'll copy it over from the source. Perfect. And let me put in that label gift packages. I'll copy it onto each of these so it knows what I want it to look like. All right, and then transform. And perfect, there I have a formula um, that, I, that I didn't even have to try to write myself, which is great as somebody that's, you know, a sales and business technologist, so a little newer to this area. Perfect, well, now I wanna test that this function uh, or this flow is going to operate as intended. So I go ahead and I'm gonna go back to that very first system, my Microsoft Dynamics um, order management. I'll give it a second to load for me. All right, I'm gonna to wanna to generate some sample test data. So the first thing I'm gonna do is go over to this view available mappings and check out the sample data that we have populated within here. So here I can see some sample fields, but I wanna see some actual numbers and locations put within there. So I'll just regenerate that sample data, see all those options for me. Looking pretty good, looking pretty accurate. So I'm gonna go ahead and click test and perfect. I can see that the flow executed properly. Uh, I can click into it if I wanna see any more information, but it looks like everything worked just as intended. So um, I can go ahead and exit out now um, and start the flow. And I will um, let Martin know that I was able to make all of those changes myself really quickly and easily. Um, and hopefully now we can go and quickly deploy it. Excellent. Thank you everyone for sticking with our demo. Hopefully that helped you see how easy it was for me at Acme Coffee Roasters to be able to quickly just add um, an additional um, business partners flow for order management into the process. Um, so very simple and streamlined and, and able to take advantage of a lot of the capabilities from um, our AI piece as well. So now we're going to jump back over to the slides and I'll pass it back to you, Nate. Okay. All right. So let's go ahead and we'll, we'll do a little bit of wrap up. Um, and uh, continue on in terms of, of uh, being able to provide you information in terms of uh, how to best engage with us and to learn. Um, here we've got a variety of different ways uh, for you to learn in, ter in terms of self-service outside of the event this week. Um, we've got a, a, a YouTube playlist with uh, dozens of, of, of various shorter tutorials on, on using uh, various aspects and features of the product in version 12. Um, in the middle, we've got uh, our community. Uh, I'd encourage you to, to, uh, to sign up and register. Uh, this is where you can get information on uh, what's new, announcements of, of, of new quarterly releases, um, what's included with those, uh, uh, webinars that are upcoming on specific topics that might be of interest to you. Um, we've got discussion threads where you can engage with us in terms of, uh, of experts uh, and uh, folks from our engineering lab as well, um, can help answer questions, etc., cetera, uh, as well as, as others from throughout the, uh, the community in terms of, uh, of other users and partners. Um, on the right, we've got links to all of our uh, documentation, uh, whether that's uh, more traditional software, deployments for, for uh, uh, ESB architecture, uh, ASUN containers, and lots of different questions that have come up on that. Uh, all the details are available there, um, as well as, uh, uh, as version migration between IIB 10 and, and uh, version 12, as well as migration to, uh, to Cloud Pack for integration. Uh, so uh, let's continue to, to move on here in terms of, of ways to engage in and learn with, uh, with us this week. Uh, this is just a sampling um, of the great technical lineup that we've got in terms of technical sessions and expert speakers uh, across the board uh, from our engineering lab here. 
Um, we've got uh, senior technical leaders um, that you see kind of up here with Ben and Ram and Krithika. Uh, we got Matt Roberts, who was our CTO. Uh, he'll be leading a session on uh, AI and hybrid cloud. So kind of uh, double clicking into uh, the aspects that Annalise had talked about there. Uh, but also looking at other use of AI uh, across the integration portfolio and bringing together uh, app integration with API management, for example, and different AI capabilities that are there. Uh, David Cole will be uh, leading a migration session. So if you're uh, still on IIB version 10 and are looking to, uh, to migrate and move forward to ACE 12, um, he's got a deep dive session that you'll definitely want to take in. Um, Amar is presenting on performance and troubleshooting later today. Uh, so if you're, you're interested in uh, uh, performance, whether that's uh, in traditional uh, integration servers or containerized uh, integration runtimes, uh, or whether you're looking at troubleshooting or, or monitoring aspects, including our business, uh, uh, business transaction monitoring, uh, check out Amar and... Uh, uh, my peer, uh, Wayne Swales, will be uh, involved in that session there as well. Uh, we've got uh, Rob, uh, who's our architect focused on containers, and he'll be speaking with a number of engineering peers on, uh, on ACE Kubernetes operators and how to more easily operate ACE deployed in containers. Uh, so another session that if you're looking uh, at modernizing and, and moving your integrations, whether uh, whether that's on, on cloud or on premise to, uh, to take advantage of the benefits of, of agile integration. Um, I'd certainly encourage you to, to go into that session. That's a completely revamped session from last year with even more uh, technical depth and expertise that uh, he'll be sharing there. Uh, so great stuff uh, coming up all week. Uh, last but not least, uh, what's coming up next, um, starting here in, in about 10 minutes or so, um, is uh, my colleagues Rashmi Kaushik and, and Andy Garrett, uh, who will be going through uh, API-led integration, uh, simply explained. As Bernard had talked about earlier, they'll be actually uh, doing a demo of the new unified authoring experience and going through uh, several deeper uh, real-world use cases uh, that make sense uh, uh, to deliver uh, in an API-led way. So uh, with that, um, I hope everybody has a great week here at TechCon. Uh, again, engage with us. Uh, all of the speakers are going to be available that are speaking in, in uh, one of the days um, at the office hours. Uh, so all of us here for, for Tuesday will, will be there at uh, 2.30 Eastern time. Um, so bring your questions. Uh, we'll do our best to answer them. All right, uh, with that, back over to you, Enrique. Can you hear me now? Nice. So I have a, a, a couple of questions. Um, no, number one is how, do, how are we positioning ACE as an iPass compared to CP4i? So uh, I don't know who, who wants to cover that question, Nate or Bernard? How is that going? Yeah, I can, right? yeah I, I can have a first stab at it. So it's a, the question was sort of like uh, comparing like iPads, which is which is App Connect but as a service on the cloud, and then comparing that with Cloud Pack for integration, um, and sort of saying, well, you know, this iPads term looks really overloaded. And and I totally totally agree, right? The terms are overloaded in the industry. For us, it's we, we try and clear it up though. So Cloud Pack for integration is all about container deployments and being able to do it on OpenShift and deploying that wherever wherever you want to, right? OpenShift allows you to run anywhere, be that in the cloud, be it on-prem, but it's not an as-a-service offering, right? It's an offering that gives you containers, gives you the power of containers, but it's it's not intended to be as a service. So app connect. on a usage based kind of interaction rather than more of a install and manage yourself kind of interaction that you can get with cloud pack for integration using OpenShift wherever you deploy it I, I don't know whether i really managed to clear that up but uh, that's that's the differentiation between the two no i think that's great bernard uh that would have been the same answer i give uh, you know when we look at um the ipads 
uh, the iPad space and of course being as a service with everything available managed, uh, you know, managed by IBM or by your integration vendor, uh, you know, it is m more centric to the uh, app integration space um, with additional, you know, as a service offerings uh, that help to complement that, right? And bringing the different as a service elements together. So whether that's uh, API management with, with App Connect as a service, um, or whether that's MQ or other integration technologies, um, it's being able to use those um, and being able to connect the different the different services together versus having you know one Uber cruise ship um, of of uh, of cloud service there. Uh, so that provides you the ability to mix and match uh, flexibility in terms of uh, um, uh, usage, uh, your integration patterns. Um, and being able to uh, consume those, um, the, and specifically the amount that you need to consume uh, individually. Okay, there's uh, an, another one here. Okay, I understand the as a service part, but if I could use another term like hybrid integration platform, would CP4I be branded as a hybrid integration platform? Bernard, that's it. Yeah, yeah, certainly in the in the um, you know in the straight definition of a hybrid integration platform. Yeah, yes, uh, cloud pack for integration meets that definition. Um, you know, we can we can nitpick at these at the titles and try and try and find an exact definition. And probably analysts will differ in terms of how they define what a hybrid integration platform is and whether we meet it. I think probably cloud pack for integration will always meet that definition. As I said, it's not as a service. It's self-managed software that you are installing, you are managing, and Cloud Pack for Integration gives you that that uh, flexibility, right? You can do the container deployment, you can do the on-prem deployment, but it, it differentiates from as a service software managed by someone else, in this case, IBM, for you on the cloud. Good. Well, I don't see any more um, questions here in the chat. We're um, almost on the top of the hour. so. Thanks, team. Uh, good conversation. That was that was great. Please attend our office hours at the end of the day for a chance to talk and ask questions or discuss topics that did not come up throughout the session. Before you go, you will see a poll in the chat. Please give us feedback. We want to know how we can make the most of your time. So please uh, fill out that poll. Plus, if you want to stay connected, join the IBM community. Take the link in the chat. Make sure you select the next session in, the, in, in this track or another. Um, exit this session and enter your next favorite. So hope to see you again soon. Bye-bye. Thanks, team. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, everyone.